Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to give it a minute for everyone in the waiting room to enter and we'll get started shortly. Okay, well, in the interest of time, I think we should get started. So again, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. And for those who are watching later, thank you for uh, checking out this, this video. We're really excited to be here and appreciate you joining us. I'm Amanda Hansen, I'm the Deputy Secretary for Climate Change at the California Natural Resources Agency. And our agency is responsible for coordinating the update of California's climate adaptation strategy. And this update we have done in very close partnership with our colleagues in the governor's office of planning and research. Um, and I will hand it over to Nuantara to introduce herself to all of you. Thank you, Amanda, and welcome everybody. I'm Nuantara Key, Deputy Director for Climate Resilience in the Governor's Office of Planning and Research. And as some of you may know, we are charged with implementing the Integrated Climate Adaptation and Resiliency Program, which coordinate and which works to coordinate and align adaptation and resilience efforts, um, really with an eye towards supporting local implementation. So again, thank you so much for being here. And as Amanda said, we're excited to share the draft of the 2021 update to the state adaptation strategy and to have had the opportunity to, to partner on this update. Amanda, back to you. Thanks. So really the goal of today is to take some time to orient everyone to the draft and walk through our approach, some of the key goals that we had in mind as we worked with partners and, and um, built in sort of the input that we received um, throughout the development of the draft. We wanted everyone to understand, sort of start their reading at the same uh, point. So we're hoping that this webinar can really set the stage for um, you know, useful background as, as you dive into the draft. Um, next slide, please. I'm going to give some big picture background on our approach to the strategy update, and then Nuantara will dive into some of the details of the newly released draft. So um, as I mentioned at the outset, our adaptation strategy is the, the resources agency is, is charged with coordinating the update to these adaptation strategies and uh, those updates are required every three years. So each strategy really builds on the previous one and, and this, this one is no different. Next slide. Um, the draft really represents an all of government administration wide approach to climate adaptation and resilience. Um, the actions that are included in the strategy were developed and refined by the agencies that are listed here on this slide, which includes their many departments, commissions, councils, boards, conservancies, offices, etc. So um, this is just sort of a short list representing a much broader suite of engagement that we did across the administration to understand um, what we could uh, integrate into this very significantly high level statewide framework um, based on the actions that are underway across all of our agencies. Um, next slide. The draft was also informed by extensive um, external engagement. So if we could go to the next slide. Um, we, we kicked this off with a webinar in May and we then held 10 virtual workshops around the state to gather feedback on regional adaptation and resilience priorities, actions, and challenges. We've also been conducting early tribal engagement and consultation throughout this period. Next slide. So our early stakeholder engagement helped us understand how previous strategies were useful 
so that we could incorporate what worked and adjust what didn't. And this input, along with working internally across you know, climate leaders within our administration, we really think about what a successful strategy needs to do. And those are sort of distilled down into three things. First, a successful strategy needs to set strategic direction and clearly identify needed outcomes. Second, it should unify efforts across sectors and regions and really enable a coordinated and integrated approach to building climate resilience. Third, it should help Californians understand what the state's strategy is on climate resilience and how they can contribute. So we're really excited to release the final strategy as an interactive website that will serve as a hub for state climate resilience action and be updated to reflect our progress and make adjustments. Um, next slide. California's adaptation strategy is, is really a place to nest the many existing efforts already underway to show how they fit together and how they drive on critical priorities. You'll see some of this through the examples that Nuantara will walk you through in a little bit here. Next slide. In addition to nesting the many efforts and, and showing how they fit together, pulling together a, this, this state adaptation strategy is really a great opportunity to think about where we might have gaps in our approach. And throughout the process, we've determined that one gap is the lack of an updated framework for addressing extreme heat. And in response, we're going to be developing a strategic and comprehensive set of, of state actions to adapt and build resilience to extreme heat, releasing an extreme heat framework later this year. We did hold three listening sessions in the spring and summer of 2021 to solicit public input on areas of key focus and actions to consider for inclusion in the framework. So we'll be excited to release that soon. Next slide. So building on the idea of a whole of government approach to climate adaptation, we need the strategy to provide really clear and co-equal priorities that enable us to you know, draw connections among our collective efforts and to guide the state's policies, programs, and investments. These six priorities that you see on the screen were refined through our, our public engagement process held over the summer. Really appreciate people's input. Um, and, um, you know, I think these are intended, as I mentioned, to set, identify the outcomes that we are trying to achieve. Um, I'm gonna walk next into how we've structured the strategy uh, to show how we're driving on these priorities. Next slide. So for each priority, we've included a set of goals, and then for each goal, a set of actions. And these actions are how the strategy integrates key elements of the state's latest sector-specific plans. Um, these include, I mean, there's a, a lot of these sector-specific plans. So, you know, as an example, um, uh, we've got the, the transportation infrastructure climate plan and the wildfire and, and forest resilience plan and the water resilience portfolio, et cetera. So to drive accountability and transparency, each action includes a success metric and timeframe, a responsible agency, and links to more information. And I really want to note here, it's very important to flag all of the metrics and timeframes that are included in the draft are very much still a work in progress and undergoing internal review. You will see some actions have multiple success metrics. Some actions did not include any success metrics. Same thing for the timeframes. It's very important to flag that we really want to get this document out for public comment and to um, you know, preview this very different approach to the strategy. So very much welcome your thoughts on these success metrics and these timeframes um, as we undergo you know, internal review right now and, and then incorporate public input. So I would also flag here that when it comes to the timeframes, um, you know, across the administration, we are taking the governor's direction to consider where we can accelerate climate action timelines where we can. So 
I will stop there and now hand it over to Nuantara, who's going to run through an example action um, from the draft for each of the six priorities, just so everyone can get a flavor of exactly how we've structured this um, and why. So Nuantara. Great. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. So to dive straight in, as Amanda mentioned, to each of the priorities, the first one here on the screen is to strengthen protections for climate vulnerable communities. Now, under each priority, as Amanda um, just walked through, we have a series of goals. For example, under this draft priority, there are three goals. When you look at the, the document out for public comment, you'll see them. The one we're providing here as an example is to improve understanding of climate impacts on California's communities, including vulnerability drivers. Again, highlighting the goal that will help advance that this draft priority. And under this goal, we've included an action here, um, which is to identify climate vulnerable communities in California to direct public and private actions that reduce risk and build resilience. Again, each one of these actions under nested under the goal um, includes success metrics and timeframes. For this example, the success metric is to launch a statewide and all risk web based platform that identifies climate vulnerable communities with a time frame of releasing that in 2022. Really quickly here, I just want to highlight that as you are looking at um, the draft strategy and providing comment, it's important to recognize, I think that, you know, developing success metrics for resilience is a complex um, process and really requires, you know, identifying where we have quantitative metrics and um, can be tracking tracking success through quantitative measures, but also recognizing some of the things that we need to be driving on on these actions need to be measured through achieving key milestones um, and, and tracking progress that way. So just a flag here, and we'll go through this as I continue walking through each one of these draft priorities so you can get a sense of the kind of diversity of different success metrics we're building out here. But I did want to just take a quick moment here to flag that to orient you all as you're looking at the strategy and, and providing comment and input here. So moving here, um, you'll see last couple points on the slide that in addition to the priority, goal, action, success metric, we also have included um, reference to the key agency or agencies that are involved in driving on each one of these success metrics, as well as links for more detail. As Amanda mentioned, we're looking to release the draft, the final strategy rather, as a web-based um, on a website rather and so really wanting to be able to link people and really quickly to additional resources and information so um, really important that we're providing links to additional detail for each one of these actions so i spent a little bit longer on this one than i will for each of the others just to kind of orient you to the structure but we can move to the next priority great so this one is to draft priority is to bolster public health and safety in light of increasing climate risks. Again, we've got the goal. Um, again, for this one, there are three goals that we've identified that are used to kind of organize a suite of actions, related actions that help drive towards this priority. For example, here, this action is to integrate climate adaptation and resilience principles into the design, construction, and operation of the high-speed rail system. Just taking a quick second to go back to Amanda's framing, we um, this is an example of where we are nesting existing efforts and strategies and plans that are driving on resilience. So just flagging that um, you know this is specific to the high-speed rail system, um, and so really great opportunity for us to nest that within the broader structure of the strategy. Again, success metrics. Um, for this one, we've got the number of exposure assessments of future climate hazards and scenarios conducted. And then this time frame is, um, again, as needed in parallel with updated federal and state climate projections. Again, just flagging the agencies um, who are involved and then a link to additional detail. 
So if you can go to the next slide, please. Great. So this, the third priority that we've identified in the draft is to build a climate resilient economy. Again, we have a goal, deepen understanding of climate change effects on California's economy with um, an action success metric timeframe. Again, I'm not going to read through each one of these um, in detail, but just wanting to again show what we're driving towards here. Next slide, please. So this next one is draft priority is to accelerate nature-based climate solutions and strengthen climate resilience of natural systems. This goal is to, in, for that we're showing here, is to increase the pace and scale of nature-based climate solutions. And then this action is to increase the pace and scale of wildfire resilience and forest health projects. And as Amanda mentioned, you know, this is a good example where in some instances, we have multiple success metrics that are driving towards um, achieving that action or taking steps towards that action. So, for example, here we have scale up forest health treatments to 500,000 acres annually with a time frame of 2025. And then a second success metric, which is to scale up state prescribed fire treatments up to 100,000 acres annually again, completed by 2025. So this one is a, a good example, again, of where we've got across the strategy, some actions with multiple metrics um, and multiple you know, different agencies that are, and, and actors, state actors that are driving on that. Next slide, please. Great, so this draft priority is to make decisions based on best available climate science. The goal here is to invest in actionable climate science. And I'm not gonna read this entire action, but you know, this one points to um, the implementation of California's climate change assessments, um, including success metrics and timeframe again, um, as well as the agencies and links to additional detail for this one. All right, next slide. Okay, last but definitely not least, um, our sixth draft priority you'll find in the strategy is to partner and collaborate to leverage resources. For example, here we've pulled in a goal to facilitate collaboration to build climate resilience across sectors and scales and an action to improve coordination and alignment on climate adaptation and resilience in the water sector through partnerships. Again, there's success metric and time frame for each of those and um, for the agency and agencies you'll see here reference to a number of different state partners that are involved in driving on this action um, and driving towards those success metrics. And then again, just highlighting, you know, for more detail linking directly to the water resilience portfolio again flagging that you know, this entire approach is really, you know, nesting and building on the many different um, existing strategies and sector based uh, plans that are out there. So next slide, please. Great. So after just walking through that high level on the each of the draft priorities, um, I'm now going to turn to a quick overview of what comes next. So building on the engagement that Amanda mentioned earlier in the recap of where we've been, we are now in the public comment phase. Really excited to be kicking um, things off this week and for this webinar to provide this overview. Next steps are to um, hold a series of public workshops. We have got three workshops. The dates are listed here. We do hope that you all can join us for one of those workshops to dig in into more detail and be able to have some conversation and dialogue, get feedback, answer questions, um, et cetera. So really looking forward to engaging with you and, and hopefully many more through the over the course of the next month. We're also holding tribal listening sessions um, in addition to continuing the formal consultation process that Amanda mentioned earlier. And public comments, um, this um, entire process runs for 30 days. It runs from October 18th when we release the strategy on Monday through November 17th. So you can register for any of the events that are here on the slide. Um, 
on our strategy update webpage, and we will put the link to that registration to that website where you can register in the chat. And then lastly, I just want to note that we plan to release the final strategy as a web based platform by the end of this calendar year. Next slide please. Great, so just a quick um, minute here to go over how you can submit written public comment. Again, 30 days, so um, we'll be open to receiving written public comment through November 17th. And you can provide that in two ways. The first is by mail to the address that is listed here on this slide. Um, and the second is to the email, if you prefer to just send a digital um, comment letter in that way, um, you can send it to our icarp at opr.ca.gov email. We will also drop these options into the chat so you've got them on hand here. And as was noted at the beginning, this webinar is going to be um, re being recorded and will be posted. So this information will be available there um, for continued reference. So um, with that, I just want to say we look forward to hearing about how you see your adaptation and resilience priorities reflected and getting your feedback on how our new approach to California's climate adaptation strategy is helping to build resilience across the state. So with that, um, I want to say again, thank you for being here today and we look forward to receiving your comments and we are now going to, um, I think that's it for our um, Presentation, so you can go to the next slide. Great. So now we're going to transition to taking your questions here. And um, what we want to focus on today is if there are questions on the strategy development or public comment process. Again, as I mentioned before or just a little bit ago, we are going to um, really take the opportunity at those public workshops to dive into more substantive conversation and discussion around the content of the strategy. So with that, um, I'm going to look over at the chat to see what questions we've got coming in. I've been seeing a number of, of um, things pop up here. So as I've been presenting. We have a question from Ryan. Um, and his question is a good one. It's one we asked ourselves too, which is, why wouldn't you categorize the priorities based on the threat? So flood, fire, drought, sea level rise, extreme heat. We absolutely thought about that. Um, and as you may know, previous state adaptation strategies have been organized by sector. So you know, what are the actions underway on water? in one chapter? What are the actions underway on energy in one chapter? What are the actions underway in agriculture one chapter? And the reason that we've evolved, moved away from that approach um, is that it, it doesn't allow for us to show the intersections. And we ran into the same challenge when thinking about organizing the strategy by climate threat, because many of the actions that are underway uh, address more than one threat. And so we really thought that you know, organizing by the outcomes we want to achieve is the best way to show, um, you know, the, the intersections and uh, points of alignment and leverage uh, in a way that the other options available to us didn't quite do the same. So um, that was our, our rationale there. Great. Thanks, Amanda. I think I have the next question, which is, when the strategy refers to risks, is it in general referring only to climate risks? And the, the short answer there is yes. We are really focused in the state adaptation strategy on the risks driven through climate change. Um, we know there are many kind of interactions of those risks in community and in place with other drivers, um, hazards, risks, et cetera. But this is um, this strategy is focused on climate risk. So hope that clarifies there. Um, there is another question, maybe Amanda, if you want to take the next one around how the extreme heat framework fits into the overall strategy. Sure. So as we develop this extreme heat framework, we're thinking about how it can plug in to the state adaptation strategy once it's finalized. Um, you know, we wanted to give ourselves a little bit of space to finalize that extreme heat framework, um, perhaps 
it's unclear if we'll finish it before the state adaptation strategy is, is released, but just in case we needed time, um, our, our plan is to take the efforts that are uh, captured in the extreme heat uh, framework and build them into the strategy. Um, you know, if it ends up being that the framework is completed before the strategy is completed, then we will integrate them into the strategy as well. So it's really just sort of a timing and a sequencing um, question. Uh, but but fundamentally, you know, the the actions that we are going to be outlining in the extreme heat strategy will support the state's climate adaptation strategy. Wonderful. Um, I'm looking here. Um, Manda, I went a little bit out of sequence. Uh, but so there's another question here for you. Um, in the chat, it reads, um, it feels like what is missing are the actual numerous community organizing strategies behind the actions. How are agencies partnering with CBOs to execute these actions, for example? Will, there, will, will that be addressed in the website you'll be rolling out or added somewhere? That's a great question. Um, I mean, one of the central, uh, goals for the state adaptation strategy is to really underscore the not just potential but need for action across sectors across actors across regions and so it is very important to us to showcase um, you know how these partnerships can deliver on our climate resilience priorities I think you can see some of the um, uh, some of the actions that are listed in the strategy that relate to partnerships and, and leveraging resources, um, that, that's a place where I think, you know, this connectivity is highlighted. But, you know, I would also point out, we, we were challenged a little bit here because it's the state's adaptation strategy and several of the actions that are included as well as those that ended up not getting included, um, you know, our, our partners are not, necessarily state partners. And so we ran into a slight challenge of thinking about, you know, how do we capture them here? Because in, in many ways, the, what we're putting forward, is a, it's a commitment and we will be reporting on it. And we are, um, you know, hold, holding ourselves very much accountable. And so, you know, really we're careful about how we listed partners in that effort, so just to respect the fact that this is um, our accountability and um, and commitment in this strategy. So I hope that answers your question. Thanks. Great. And then there's a another one here, kind of following on that, and specifically focused on um, local governments as well. And you know, uh, just a kind of quick step back, and you know, recognizing the role that um, our adaptation and resilience program at OPR plays is you know, really recognizing the importance of local partners to drive on implementation. I mean, there obviously are many, many examples and we've highlighted them, you know, key priorities and examples of actions in the state where we are driving as state agencies to drive implementation, but we know that's not the entire, as Amanda was just describing, the entire universe of who's taking action on the ground. And so across many of the actions, um, in the state strategy are um, key partnerships with local governments. We you know, obviously aren't gonna be able to list out every partner on each project or action, but absolutely driving on that. And then, you know, I think one of the other areas where we were really intentionally trying to focus and elevate the importance of partnership is around the draft priority around leveraging, you know, partnerships to leverage resources. So um, hopefully, you know, that's well reflected there. But again, as you're providing public comment and input, would love feedback on how to kind of strengthen that important role of partnership to drive on the, the outcomes and, and actions that we're looking to through this strategy. I see another question in, in the Q&A here about the metrics, the success metrics. So um, there's not so much in the strategy about, well, I should say there is, there is so much there about where to go, but not much about how to get there. Um, and what I want to, to say in response is these success metrics are very much in, intended to be the how do we get there. 
Um, and I, I think Nu and Tara or I, I don't remember at this point, one of us uh, hit on this point in our presentation, but I'll take this, this minute here to elaborate a little bit, which is to say, you know, developing resilience metrics is quite challenging. There's just no one way to do it. And it really depends on the action that you're taking. And so, you know, we have been, we are not gonna let the perfect be the enemy of the good in identifying success metrics, some of which will be uh, quantitative and some of which won't. Some will be a very clear metric, some will look more like a milestone, but we want the success metrics to be exactly what you've just described. How will we get there? What is the step that the state is going to take to move us in this direction? And it's not going to be that the success metric is delivering perfectly on the action in every single, you know, once that success metric is achieved, that action is done. It is simply an important step along the path of delivering on that action toward that goal. So, um, you know, I think we really welcome your, your input and your feedback on how to make those success metrics um, really the how we get there in a way that is meaningful and credible and aligns with, with your priorities and the actions that you wanna see undertaken. Amanda, maybe I'll um, just add on to what you just laid out for the resilience metrics and staying on this topic that, um, you know, the state adaptation strategy is, as Amanda just laid out, identifying success metrics related to state action. As we've also been saying, there are many other actors and roles and partners who are driving um, action across the state. And so through our adaptation program at OPR, we've, you know, in parallel to developing this strategy, been working to understand how do we, you know, drive towards um, resilience metrics and actions that that reflect kind of the broad suite of actions there. So this is a really critical, the state adaptation strategy is a really critical component to that, um, but we are continuing to explore the many things Amanda laid out also through our adaptation program to better understand how local communities are tracking progress and how do we start bringing that together in a holistic approach. So really appreciate those questions. We have another question here. How are you engaged in cooperation or strategy sharing with other state environmental agencies seeking to implement their own frameworks and climate plans? Um, you know, California is a member of the US Climate Alliance where there is a significant um, and uh, exciting sort of group dedicated to exactly this and uh, Nuantara joins on behalf of California, um, and we're very active in, in that space. We also, um, you know, connect offline with some of the members of that group. You know, we had a good conversation with folks in Massachusetts. Um, you know, we're, we're very interested in um, collaborating with partners in other states, not reinventing the wheel, um, and, and thinking about how, you know, for example, our metrics work can can align um, and and allow for sort of commonality across state borders. So um, thank you for the question and we're we're excited about about that work. Great. And so there's a question here around a number of questions that have come in around kind of funding and how this strategy relates to the resilience budget that um, a historic was part of the historic climate budget that was just passed and signed for this year. So another question around how these actions are funded. Um, and how you know how will this impact funding programs? So that's a great question. Um, going back to kind of our overarching, one of the overarching goals um, and approach to this update was the desire to create a place where we're telling the story and better reflecting how the many different actions we're already driving on through. Um, different strategies like the water resilience portfolio, et cetera, that we've covered earlier. Um, this is um, in this strategy. So the funding that came through the recent budget um, and other existing you know, funding sources 
are directly going to those actions through existing state strategies um, and um, and plans that are there, and those are all reflected in the the state adaptation strategy. So there is a a direct connection, um, and as we are working to build out this historic budget, really looking at how do we drive the critical resources needed to existing programs where we have them, so we can really be taking you know accelerating implementation. And, and taking bold action to, to drive implementation on the ground. And this strategy just provides us with a really more holistic framework on how those pieces fit together. Um, I think I will stop there on the budget side and hand it over to Amanda for the next question. Well, we have a question about translation. Um, is the workshop, are the, are the coming workshops going to be conducted in English and Spanish? Um, and I'm gonna commit to determining what's feasible there. Um, we had not planned for translation, but if that is something that would be of interest, we will explore it and update our website if we are able to, um, to lock in those services in time. I appreciate the question. Um, we also got a question around um, the priorities. Were the priorities developed considering how they might connect to um, some of the sector specific plans? And the answer is not really. <laughs> no, I think really the priorities were developed um, in thinking about what we want our climate resilience actions to deliver for Californians. And then once we figured those priorities out, we plugged the sector specific efforts into the various priorities um, and outcomes uh, as appropriate. So it was sort of the flip of uh, of, the, of the, the question that came in. Another question, would it be possible for the Department of Education to be identified? Absolutely. Um, you know, we conducted a pretty widespread uh, engagement process internally. Um, and so I think it's very possible that in our efforts, just given the size and scope of California state government, um, we missed folks or we included folks in the wrong place. That's also possible. Um, so the answer is yes there. And if you catch any mistakes or any obvious glaring, you know, this, this entity should be listed, please flag it in your comments. Great. Um, okay, time for, I'm seeing a question here around timeframes, um, both in terms um, the um, filling in ones that are missing, but also updating. So um, as we've mentioned, definitely looking, you know, we're working right now to update the timelines we're taking very seriously. Obviously, the governor's call to look at all timelines across our climate action and identifying where we can move up and accelerate implementation. So we're going through that process now um, and also welcome any input on that as you're looking at the strategy and, and providing comment to us. Um, in terms of updating the timelines, you know, as we go, this is one of the goals of presenting the strategy as a website and in a web based uh, format, it's going to be much easier for us as we make progress as we're, you know, developing our annual implementation kind of updates that we're going to be able to reflect that and update those in in more real time um, on the website itself. So yes, definitely looking to, to continue updating this as as we move forward and as we get new information and make progress um, on the ground. We, we did just get another question around the difference between the extreme heat framework and the climate adaptation strategy. So I'll quickly address that one. Um, as we updated the state's adaptation strategy, we realized that we don't have a comprehensive uh, approach to addressing extreme heat in California. So thinking about how we can address that, um, we decided coming up with an updated framework. I guess the last time that we released a framework on extreme heat was in 2013. So um, we are updating that framework and the actions that will be included in that framework will help support the state adaptation strategy and um, are likely to be integrated into the state adaptation strategy. <clears throat> we just have a timing issue on you know, when, they will, when they will be completed. So um, they're very connected. 
um, but extreme heat framework is really focused on actions that deliver on extreme heat, whereas the state adaptation strategy reflects the actions underway that address all of the climate threats California is facing. Great, and just a reminder for folks here today uh, for the webinar, we are um, responding as you're noting to kind of clarifying questions around the goal, the process for the strategy. We are not gonna have time here today to cover many of the questions that are coming in around kind of some of the, the more substantive um, questions around specific actions in that. We just in the interest of, of time and the um, kind of goal for this webinar, um, again, focusing on those the process and clarifying questions, but we are absolutely going to have time to dig into these you know, substantive questions at our workshops um, through the tribal listening sessions, et cetera, that we outlined before. So just a note that if we're not able to get to all the questions, the many wonderful questions that are coming in here today, we um, will have ample opportunity in the coming month to continue discussing these with you. So um, just a note on that. Um, I'm looking here. Okay, Monday, you take it. We have a question about, um, well, there's been a couple questions that have come in that are sort of along these lines, but the question I'm reading are, how are carbon emissions addressed in the strategy? Um, California has two really big overarching statewide climate strategies. One is our scoping plan, which is updated every five years. And that is the state's strategy for delivering on our greenhouse gas emission reduction goals and targets and our our goal of achieving carbon neutrality by 2045 or possibly 2035 um, that strategy the, the, or the scoping plan is in the process of being updated right now and it will be released next year in 2022 a lot of these sector specific plans support the scoping plan and our carbon neutrality greenhouse gas emission reduction efforts. The strategy we're talking about today, California's climate adaptation strategy, is really focused on all of the efforts underway to help California reduce the risks from climate change, now urgent risks, and to build resilience to future climate risks that the best available science tells us are coming to California. Um, the climate crisis is already here. And so this strategy is really set to outline how California is driving to reduce risks and build long-term climate resilience. So um, carbon emissions are really the focus of the scoping plan, whereas addressing the, the impacts of climate change and being prepared for those impacts is the, the sort of uh, focus of the state adaptation strategy. Right, and there's a, a question here, process question here around going back again to the extreme heat framework um, and if there will be opportunity to provide public comment on that. Um, yes, we are, we're working to, to pull that together and are um, gonna be having an opportunity here for public kind of conversation and input on the draft um, framework as well. We are still working on the details of that, so don't have those kind of dates and an opportunity drafted out just yet, but we'll definitely be sharing that um, on the state adaptation strategy update website that has been um, sent through here, the chat, the link there. That's also where you'll find information on opportunities to weigh in on the heat framework when once we have that dialed in. Um, we also will be sending out updates via our listservs. So both through Natural Resources Agency, through OPR and across our state partners. So you will definitely, um, if you're signed up for those listservs, you will definitely get updated information on that opportunity as it comes out. A question around internal collaboration. Um, can you please touch on how the different California agencies work together on both the adaptation strategy and the scoping plan? Um, I would say that this is a this is a really critical question, and when not done well, um, could really create challenges for implementation and 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 our success. So, something that I'm really excited to uh, to report is that. We have a lot of collaboration that has been done, uh, sort of uh, s structures that have been put into place to ensure that this collaboration happens. 
um, you know, our, our governor's office obviously coordinates uh, with, with climate deputies across the administration. Um, but I'll, I will let Nuantara talk a little bit about the, the interagency convening and collaboration that was done to develop the state adaptation strategy and that will continue and has, you know, uh, evolved over time, uh, but really serves as the foundation for our connectivity. So I'll let Nuantara take it from here. Great, thanks so much, Amanda. Yes, so as Amanda mentioned, um, through ICARP, our Integrated Climate Adaptation and Resiliency Program, OPR is charged with um, really leading on the interagency coordination, again, as I mentioned, across state agencies, but also with partners um, across the state. So we have two main vehicles and structures for doing that, um, plus a many, many other kind of ad hoc um, opportunities as well. But those two areas are first, our technical advisory council, which brings together um, many state agencies, uh, deputy secretary level, um, as well as you know perspectives from across the state, from local, regional, tribal governments, community-based organizations, nonprofits, and private sector, as well as research. So that is a really um, opportune. Um, venue that we have to have kind of a public facing dialogue and space through public meetings around um, resilience and adaptation and driving towards much better alignment and coordination. In addition to that, given the role of OPR through ICARB, we also convene our interagency resilience working group. And that work group is state agencies really coming together to have deep conversations and thinking about how we better align all of our work across agencies at a, at a staff level. So we're really trying to drive towards this integrated kind of coordinated approach across many different levels um, and across different, different sectors and perspectives. So thanks for that, that question. I see a question in here. Um, how does the strategy connect with uh, the state's commitment to conserve 30% of our lands and coastal waters by 2030? Um, the, the strategy under development to outline our approach to achieving that state goal I, is, is still under development. So once it is uh, released and finalized, it will get plugged into the state adaptation strategy as um, as as the I'm sorry I'm getting distracted by the chat. It will get plugged into the state adaptation strategy in terms of how will 30 by 30 really support our climate resilience um, efforts. Great. There's many wonderful questions coming in here, um, as you can tell, because we also need a second here to, to pause to process these. Um, so thank you so much for sending these all in. Just a, another quick note, we are um, absolutely tracking the questions, kind of substantive, detailed questions around specific actions, and that um, we are just not going to be able to answer all of those here today, as I mentioned. So really looking forward to engaging with you all through the workshops and through your writ written comments and suggestions suggestions and feedback um, over the course of this month. So just again, recognizing and, and appreciating the many different questions that are coming in. Um, and we look forward to continued discussion on the more substantive ones as we move forward. I've also seen a lot of really interesting comments um, and suggestions around, um, you know, the importance of or the nexus between social cohesion and uh, disaster response, climate resilience. Um, really welcome people's input on how to ensure that this is built into the strategy if, if people don't see it enough. Um, so I, I just wanted to flag that I, we see those and um, would very much like to ensure that that uh, very, very important element of of being prepared for, for climate emergencies um, and responding to them successfully is, is, is clearly integrated. Great, I'm seeing a, a question here around state boards um, and their involvement. So yeah, going back, I think uh, there was an earlier question and Amanda um, answered this well, but just recognizing, you know, we really are looking at 
um, making sure this state adaptation strategy is driving it at all of government approach across, you know, across the state. So absolutely recognizing the importance of state boards, commissions, conservancies, um, councils, et cetera, across the state infrastructure. So yes, um, if we have um, missed spots where there are important key state agencies, partners, boards that should be involved in actions, um, or you know, if you have insight into ways that we can be building that out, would love to, to get that feedback through this process. So um, just a quick response on that one. And I see another, sorry, Amanda, really quickly, but um, question around the scoping plan and questions for um, opportunities to engage there. Um, I don't know that we are quite the right um, representatives to respond on the scoping plan engagement, but we will definitely make sure that we pass these questions um, uh, around opportunities to engage with the scoping plan with our colleagues at CARB um, so they're aware. So thank you for those, um, and we'll make sure those get off to the right contacts and, and partners across the state. And we also saw, I see another question about, about translation. Um, so I just want to uh, co commit to looking into getting the workshops, the public workshops uh, translated uh, between English and Spanish, um, and that we will update our website with that information if we are able to get it um, built into, built into uh, the events, I think they're next week, they start next week. So um, we'll definitely do our best to make that happen. We're also seeing, I'm seeing here some links to other um, or to kind of local examples here. So appreciate that, really helpful to see um, other work across the state and, and thinking about how that fits in with the the strategy. Um, just another um, reminder or call um, to you all as you're, you know, looking at engaging with us through the workshops or in written feedback. Really, really want to know: Are the draft priorities that we've pulled together with input from um, across state government, but also with our stakeholders over the summer? Do these priorities reflect your regional or local priorities? Um, so really excited to getting input on that and, and appreciate some of the examples here that are being um, shared. Great. We're tracking the many questions here just to see what else we um, haven't answered yet. So just one second. Amanda, are you, I'm scrolling through, are you seeing any here? Um, well, I, I do see a question around um, the development, well, the development of bioresources from ag, forests, and urban to produce, to, and urban to produce low carbon energy fuels and chemicals be considered, um, as well as addressing forest, file, forest fires, ag burning, and disposal of organics in landfills. Um, there, yes, the answer is yes. Um, you know, all, all efforts to support our climate resilience, uh, outcomes are being considered. I think what we're trying to do in this strategy is identify, you know, whether that be through an action or through a success metric, the very sort of high level framework for people to understand sort of how all the puzzle pieces fit together. And so um, you will not see every single state effort underway that contributes to our climate resilience priorities reflected in the strategy. And that's because we don't, we didn't want to create, um, you know, a multi hundred page document uh, that is hard to understand how all the pieces fit together and what is the state trying to accomplish. Um, we really wanted to distill this into a high level framework that will drive action and outline um, you know, the outcomes that we are, we as the state are really seeking to deliver on. So um, the answer is yes. And you know, where exactly in the strategy these efforts um, can be found will, will depend. So if you don't see something that you think is a critical part of that high level framework in, in our story, 
uh, please please do flag it and let us know what what you would like to see and where. Um, I think you know the the really most helpful uh, contribution to this to this comment effort, public comment uh, and input period is to understand very specifically, you know, if there is a gap, how do how do you recommend we close it? What exactly did we miss, and where should it go? Um, you know, who is missing, and really to identify for us clearly, um, you know, not just what what the the problem is, but also how you recommend we go about solving for it in in the final strategy. Great. There's another question here. Um, or maybe more of a comment, but I'm going to take this opportunity to, to highlight this. And um, we absolutely agree around being able to point to kind of how to guides and guidance and tools and templates that communities can use, as well as case studies and narratives around success stories, um, really to be able to accelerate and scale implementation and um, supporting a community practice on resilience and adaptation. So I do want to just um, take this opportunity to highlight and kind of describe the connection between the state adaptation strategy and our adaptation clearinghouse, which is another um, resource that we manage through our office and through our adaptation program. So our adaptation clearinghouse, which is one of our statutory directives to um, maintain, is the place where we pull together existing, um, or rather, excuse me, examples of case studies, success stories, tools and resources, links um, and guidance around how to use climate data and science and different decision support tools that are available, as well as linking to the many, many local plans, projects, um, and guidance that's out there. So that is the home for the that suite of resources. And as you'll see in the state adaptation strategy, we have under the regional um, sections and chapter, um, we have linked to regional specific resources that live in the adaptation clearinghouse. So just um, flagging that, you know, we always are open and really appreciate input from um, all of our partners across the state. If there are resources that we have not linked to in the state adaptation clearinghouse um, that we should bring in, please let us know. You can also send those um, updates to the ICARP email address and I'll put in, we can put in the link to the adaptation clearinghouse where there's also a form for you to suggest more resources and case studies. So really appreciate that. Um, oh, and there it is. It's in the chat. It's resilientca.org. So. And noting the time, we just have two more minutes here. Um, I think this is actually a really great place to wrap, to wrap up. Um, because what it what it really speaks to is how the state has just not had a home for all of what we are doing to drive on climate adaptation and resilience, and that's part of why, rather than creating a document that will um, uh, be less interactive, we we are releasing the final strategy in the form of a website so that people who are interested in finding those case studies can easily connect to the adaptation clearinghouse. People who want to understand what is the best available climate science in California can link to the fourth and hopefully soon enough fifth climate change assessment. You know, how do I understand what climate impacts are coming? You can link to CalADAPT. Um, you know, the, the whole point of including links for more information are, people are gonna there's some people are gonna want to know a lot more about the work that is underway in a particular sector in a particular region and we wanted to make sure that moving moving forward people can have easy access to that information by coming to the state adaptation strategy and then linking out however um however they see fit so we're really excited about this approach um you know evolving from focusing in organizing around sectors to really thinking about how sectoral action, cross sector action, and cross, um, uh, you know, cross actors, uh, you know, multiple actors, uh, can deliver the, the outcomes that we we need to achieve uh, to really ensure we are um, going to leave our kids with the planet that they deserve. So, with that, uh, I think 
we will we will wrap it here. Just express appreciation for all of you who joined for your for your questions. We have tracked all of the questions that came in today. Um, we will be incorporating the input for the questions that were really more sort of substantive. Um, we, we've got those comments and we will take them into consideration and appreciate them. And um, you can also uh, email us if you have any any other questions sort of moving forward in the in the process. So um, with that, I will say thank you and turn it over to Nuantara for the final word. Great. Well, I just want to also say thank you to everybody who joined us today for all of your wonderful questions um, and engagement and really looking forward to continued discussion here and um, getting your helpful input to really make this strategy the best it can be. So thank you all and until next time. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks.